No, I don't think it is too late. I don't think it's ever too late to improve the public realm. The bigger, better question might be, or uh, is do we actually know how to do this any better than we did in the past? Because the past, by, by, by the very fact that we think it needs improving, means that we've made mistakes in the past. So do we now know what we didn't know in the past? Are we able to improve? Do we know the secret? Do we know the des are we able? Uh, I think this falls into two sides. Are we, have we got designers who can envisage better public realm? And then have we got the consents and planning um, processes in place to allow that? The first one, on, I, I think designers do know some of, about some of the mistakes that have been made early in the 20th century. Um, and I think we are now better at it. And you can see this in London. I have to talk about London as examples. The, the transformation of um, Trafalgar Square is a big high-scale example where, where simply having less traffic, um, getting rid of um, gyratory traffic systems has clearly improved public, public space. There's a much, much less high-profile example coming up between Tottenham Court Road and Gower Street where the whole area, I've, I've seen plans for, a reef, for, uh, for that whole area to be studied and basically it's reduced the impact of traffic and carried better spaces for slow public, for the walkers and for cyclists now. So I think designers do know the secrets, but there is, what, but there is um, a big if in here because the, the, it just improving the public realm um, won't, nece uh, won't necessarily create a better space. If the, because the backdrop, which is the private realm, the backdrop of big developments, this private realm, can completely ruin a, the, 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 the public streetscape. Um, and um, that is in private hands. Of course, the secret there then is who, is, is who gives, is, is, is planning conditions and, 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 and what conditions you allow the private market to do. Um, and the, my worry on that one is that although some designers might know the answers, unfortunately, planners tend to have um, the driver to go for the, 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 the thing that pleases most people. They have to, there's politics in here. They, um, design requires some risk um, and doesn't require the compromise of everybody. So, so the thing that's least objectionable, planners will have a tendency to go for the thing that's least objectionable to most people. And that, by definition, is mediocre. So although it might, it might, um, they, they might have enough rules to stop the uh, too much loss of light, things which are measurable, but planners are not able to assess whether something is really beautiful. Um, that's in the hands of designers. Um, and it takes a lot of, or, or critics, art critics, architectural critics. Um, be, so my suggestion would be that, that we really need to get architectural critics Architects, architectural critics, artists more involved in dis planning decisions and um, be able to take, be, be willing to take some risks. Basically, I prefer, even if I don't like Marmite, I prefer Marmite on my shelves to, the, to, ev to, to everything being bland. I want love it or hate it. I don't mind buildings that I hate. What I don't do mind is ones which are so boring I don't want to look at them. I don't hate them, they just don't mean anything to me.